The reason why this is important is, oh, she's leaving. Uh, do, do, did I say anything offensive? <laughs> <laughs> Had a shower this morning. Why is this important? Well, we know, for example, if you have proteins, and um, everything is based on proteins, these proteins only work in a specific environment. If you change this environment, the proteins don't work. Very simple. We also discussed that when we talked about the spectrophotometry, where I said this, this extinction coefficient is very specific with respect to this environment that uh, it is in. And just to give you an example, you did this experiment with this paranitro, parana, paranitrophenol, and you did that in a certain, under certain conditions. Now, had you chosen slightly different conditions, the outcome of this experiment would have been very, very different. So obviously, these conditions make a huge difference. So what are we talking about? Well, we are talking about the environment in, for example, a cell or an experiment that is related to the acidity of the environment. So let's talk about acids. What does acid actually mean? High concentration of protons. High concentration of protons. Wow, that's, that's, that, you're absolutely right. But what does the word actually mean? Protein Sorry? Protein donor. Protein donor. <laughs> Proton donor. What does the word mean? What does the word mean? Acid. <laughs> Yeah, what does the, it comes from the Latin word acidus, which means sour, right? So uh, if you play Trivial Pursuit and this comes up, yeah, at least you know what it means, sour. And yes, you, you, you are all right, yeah, in a way, with, but you are far ahead already. So acids are basically things that make an environment sour, if you like. That's probably because when the, when the uh, old Romans um, took a lemon and bit in that, it was probably quite sour. This is actually, here's a trick for you, how you can stop any kind of brass band immediately playing. When they are playing, you know, brr, brr, you just bite into a lemon in front of them. It's impossible for them to carry on because they are salivating like mad and it goes like. So try that next time you see a brass band. Absolutely fun. So with acids, um, a guy called Arrhenius. actually gave a definition and said, an acid increases the proton concentration in an aqueous solution. So increases the proton concentration, whatever this is, in basically water. In water. And protons are just simply naked hydrogen atoms. So we know a hydrogen usually has one electron, but in this case, the electron is no longer there. And the hydrogen is just simply the naked nucleus no electron around, and there, that's what we abbreviate as H plus. So that is a proton. 
And Arrhenius was really uh, chuffed with this definition because it could explain a lot of, of things. Uh, he also did this experiment where uh, when he added, for example, some acid to water and he had a certain indicator in it, the color of this indicator changed. Um, so usually it went from the, the most common indicator at that time was a sort of bluish reddish color and it changed from blue to red. Um, these indicators again are, are an example how this thing, uh, how the environment actually dictates what a substance looks like. You can make a very similar indicator very easily the next time you boil red cabbage. Just keep a little bit of the, of the water. It should be quite bluish color. But what you can do is add a little bit of vinegar to this water. It will turn red. So this is an indicator that depends actually on the proton concentration. If you've got lots of protons in it, then it turns red. If you remove the protons, then it will turn blue again. And you can do that as often as you like. It actually has also some implications, at least in Germany. How many Germans do we have? Anyone from Germany? Yeah, up there? Yeah, good. Um, it depends on the regional uh, cooking, uh, for example, in the northern half of Germany, people cook red cabbage with a little bit of baking powder. Why? Because the baking powder is the opposite of acidic and it makes the red cabbage go blue. In the southern part where I am from, you cook red cabbage with a dash of balsamic vinegar, which I think gives it a really nice flavor. You should try that, yeah? And as a consequence, it goes red. We call it red cabbage. In the north, in Germany, they call it blue cabbage. So you can tell where somebody comes from. It's the environment again. Right, now, an acid is a substance that increases the proton concentration in water. A base is a substance that reduces or diminishes the proton concentration in water. So that was Arrhenius' definition. Well, it turned out, actually, sometimes you don't have an environment that is made up of water. Of course, as a biologist, you always have something that is made up of water, unless you are looking into uh, very strange areas of exobiology, and there is basically everything is possible. But people found out that, hmm, what happens... <coughs> if you have a non-watery system. But before we do that, let's go back to this Arrhenius definition and give an example. So, for example, we have hydrochloric acid, which is considered to be a very strong acid. And if we put that in water, <coughs> just abbreviate it like that, we observe a reaction where actually this proton here is donated to the oxygen from the water. So we would get something like H3O plus plus Cl minus. You've done that. Everybody's done that in chemistry, right? So I don't need to tell you anything exciting here. This guy here is called what? Oxonium, yes, or 
more common? Hydronium. Actually, the way it is written like that is uh, fairly misleading. An H3O plus doesn't exist. It usually looks like, here we've got our H plus, and then there are lots of water molecules around. And one of them interacts. Could also then, and, and this interaction shifts very quickly. Could be this one. Could be this one. So they are constantly uh, fluctuating. And don't see that as a two-dimensional thing. It's actually three-dimensional. It's like a like a football surrounding uh, this little. Uh, make it uh, hydrogen in the middle. So this H3O plus is just simply, A, we don't know how many water molecules there are around. We could, of course, we could write H5O2, H7O, H7O3 plus, or something like that, yeah? Far more complicated. H uh, 114, 115, uh, oh, God knows what. But what's the point? As long as we know that H3O plus really doesn't exist as such, we just leave it like that. So here, this thing donates, obviously, protons to the water, okay? What happens if we don't have a watery uh, environment? Well, the guy, uh, two people, Brunstedt and, and Lowry, exactly, came up with a different understanding, and they said an acid is something that donates protons. Acid donates protons. <coughs> and the base is something that accepts protons. So it's no longer we need, we don't need water any longer. We just say the acid donates the protons. And if we look at our HCl example, HCl plus HO2 gives H3O plus plus Cl minus. Who is donating protons? HCl is donating protons. Who is accepting the protons? The water is accepting the protons. So donor, donor, acceptor. OK? Now, this would be a typical case of an Arrhenius system because we've got water there. How about the following HCl plus NH3 gives NH4 plus Cl minus? Is this Arrhenius? No, why not? There's no water, exactly. So the Arrhenius definition. Uh, is, is, is blown out of the water, <laughs> pun intended. So what we have here is the proton donor, HCl, 
do we have a proton acceptor? It's the NH3, the uh, ammonia. So donor, this one is the acceptor. So this is something that you can't do with the Arrhenius. You need the Pronsted-Lowry system for that. Yeah? So far, so good. Now, what actually happens in water? Well, water in itself is an acid. And I write that as a sort of an equilibrium. What happens in water is just simply that water itself can donate a proton and pass it on to another water molecule. So what we would get would be H3O plus plus what's left? <coughs> o minus. Exactly. So here, water is the donor. And here, water is the acceptor. OK? Now we can do something really weird with that. We can actually say, OK, if we put, instead of anything H donating, we can do exactly the opposite. We can, for example, add OH minus plus water. Well, let me do this in a different form. So what would happen in this case? Well, actually, this guy here could be transferred to this guy here. And we get H2O plus OH minus. Weird things going on. So OH minus, in this case, what is OH minus? It's the base. It is the proton acceptor. So we have proton acceptor, and here we have a donor again. So actually, water does really strange things. Let's have a look what happens if we did the same thing with, let's say, chloride. We have HCl plus water. We know that we have H3O plus plus Cl minus. OK? So HCl, donor acceptor. Now let's see what we put, what, what happens if we add Cl minus plus H2O. What do you expect will happen? <coughs> Sorry? A hydrogen will be donated, or a proton, be more specific. A proton will be donated to the chloride. All 
right? So, here we set, that's our acceptor. What is the H2O in this case here? It's the donor. That's weird. We said in this example here, hydro, uh, the, the water is the acceptor. In this case, we say it is the donor. What now? Is it donor? Is it acceptor? It's both. It's both. Ooh. Life sucks. In this case, we call this substance that can be both. Ampho-theric. Yeah? It can be both. It can be acceptor or it can be donor. I actually don't know whether you spell it with a TH, uh, but that's for you to find out. You can Google it. Somebody tell me then if it is with a TH or not. <laughs> Can you quickly Google it? No? I don't want to teach you anything wrong in terms of spelling or so. So we have substances that can be either donor or acceptor depending on the situation. Now, If we look at our HCl and the Cl, they both differ only by one proton. Yeah? So HCl and Cl minus differ by one proton. Now, HCl, what did we say? It is the donor. What is it? Acid or base? It's an acid, exactly. So it's the acid. Cl minus, what is that? It is the It is the base. It is the acceptor. Yeah? So that's the acceptor. Acceptor. If you have a system that is made up of acid and base, with only one proton difference, then this is called what you already said loud. It's a conjugated, conjugated system. <coughs> conjugated system. So in this case, HCl is the conjugated acid to Cl minus. Or well, you can turn it round. Cl minus is the conjugated base to HCl. Yeah? So far, it's just definitions. Right. Question for you. We have discussed already the following system. OH minus H2O H3O plus. Do we have a conjugated acid-base pair in that? <coughs> Do we have conjugated acid-base pair in that? What do you think?
you think? Convince the person sitting next to you that we either have one or we don't. Do we? Sorry? We have two. Are you sure? Hundred percent sure. Well, in this case, then I believe you. You too. You get it all. Well, you get it. Yeah, I do actually. You do. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, have we got have we got a conjugated system? How many? Two. We have this one because H two O differs from the OH minus only by one proton. This here is the base. In this case, this is the acid. And we have a second one, this one here. In this case, H3O plus is the acid. H2O is the conjugate base. And we have an amphoteric system where the H2O can actually act both as an acid in that direction, or as a base in this direction, right? So, now, let's think about if we've got um, a system like water. Let's say we have just simply water. And water. <coughs> what could happen if we let the water react with water? By the way, what is the concentration of water? What's the concentration of water? Oh, right, yeah. What's the concentration of water? <laughs> you, you did the calculation? Yeah, loud? 55 point? 55.56 molar, absolutely. Yep. I just I, I went up to, to, to Jessica because she, she said the last time, oh my god, I need to find out. <laughs> Remember, concentration of water is 55.56 molar. So what happens, ignore that, what happens in this case? Well, we get OH minus plus H plus H2O. And I've written it deliberately like that. Because constantly, water gives up protein, protons, to other water molecules, becomes OH minus, the other water molecule becomes H3O plus. But then, as I said earlier, this H3O plus will donate its proton to the next water molecule. It goes like chuck, 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 chop, chop. Yeah? So this proton is really floating around. Now, we can actually measure the concentration of these protons that are constantly produced and also, if we look at this reaction, if this proton finds an OH molecule, then it would work backwards. It goes in this direction, and it would produce water again. So there's a constant dynamic mechanism that's going on. We can actually calculate the concentration of these proteins in pure water, where there's nothing else. And we find that the proton concentration, and I write it like that with these uh, square brackets, that's very often abbreviated as concentration. 
This concentration of protons in water is 1 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. So 1 times 10 to the minus 7 mole per liter. It's a really, really small amount, isn't it? Tiny. It is basically 1 over... mole per liter, or one in 10 million molecules is actually, has given up its proton. Here's a stupid question for you. What is the concentration of OH minus? Is it the same? Yeah? Why? Because water is neutral. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that make sense to me at the moment? No. Why is it the same? It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So that means if one water molecule gives up its proton, this water molecule becomes an OH minus. Yeah? So under these circumstances, the OH minus concentration is also 1 times 10 to the minus 7 mole per liter. Okay? Right. Now, very, very often, Bioscientists, biochemists are incredibly lazy people. And especially lazy when it comes to, to writing things. Nowadays, you don't know how good things are for you, right? Because you have computers. You have computers that have subscripts, superscripts, subscripts, superscripts. It's easy. When I was at university, all you had, and I'm showing my age here, and I'm not saying, you know, you have it so much better. Uh, but um, when I was at university, we didn't have any computers. We had typewriters. And typewriters are all right apart from subscripts and superscripts. Because what you need to do with a typewriter, I don't know whether any of you have ever seen a typewriter. Um, it has a keyboard and then something like uh, little hooks with the, with the letters on it. Doom, 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 doom. There was the East Enders team, uh, but that's different. <laughs> but if you wanted a subscript, you had to move it a tiny little bit up or down, and then minus seven. And then you had to, you mustn't forget that you have to move it down again. Otherwise, you would have typed slightly higher. This is driving people, this was driving people completely to, into early grave, into destruction. Um, I did my, my dissertation on a substance that was called MO6 CL12 2 minus. Can you imagine? And uh, I had to write this about 200 times in my dissertation. Can you imagine what this did to me? This is why I became a teacher, right? <laughs> Slightly loopy. I'm digressing. So we said H plus, the concentration is 1 times 10 to the minus 7 mole per liter. And in order to avoid this minus 7 on the typewriter, people came up with something that makes it much easier to deal with. And they said, why don't we just simply make a definition. 
why don't we just simply say the weight of these hydrogens, weight actually is not the right term, really, because it isn't a weight. But weight stands here as a proxy for um, the amount of hydrogens. The amount of hydrogen, P, and this stands for probably, nobody really knows uh, uh, at the moment, but this probably stands for pondus, which means the weight. You actually use a similar term every day. What is it? Pound. Exactly. A pound is a weight. And in the olden days, <laughs> in the very olden days, the pound was a pound of silver, a certain weight of silver. Yeah? So that's pondus here. Pondus of the protons, and it was defined as the <coughs> negative logarithm Negative logarithm to the basis of 10. Sorry? To the basis of 10, and we come back to that, of the proton concentration. So how does that actually work? So let's say we want to calculate the pH of this minus of this concentration here, of this 10 to the minus 7. So we have minus log, and usually it is just simply abbreviated as log to the basis of 10 of 1 times 10 to the minus 7. Now, what we have here is, and I will do a session on uh, Thursday about the use of logarithms, the different bases that you can have. This here is the base. This here is the exponent. Now, what you can do is you can use 1 times 10 to the minus 7 in your calculator and do logarithm. The logarithm actually tells you what is the number that stands up here as the exponent. So if you put this in, you will find that the pH, in this case, equals 7. Exactly. pH is 7 of pure water. No, we can, of course, we can do the same thing for the, P, for the OH concentration as well. So we can say the OH concentration, that was the same, because as you rightly said, it was a one-to-one -one ratio equals one times 10 to the minus seven molar. Now we can define a POH. So the POH, and this would be defined as analogous minus log of the OH minus concentration. And it's very important that when we look at these concentrations, they are always given in molar. So whatever is in here has to be in the unit mole per liter. If it is millimole per liter, it doesn't work. It always has to be mole per liter in the base units. So POH, in this case, equals minus log of 1 times 10 to the minus 7. And that also gives us, if you do that, a pH of 7. 
Now, by definition, we say water usually is, we define it as neutral. And we established, or we can establish, a pH scale. Now, this pH scale would usually, usually go from 1 to about 14. Yeah? With 7 being right in the middle. So that's the pH scale. We can actually try to figure out what is the proton concentration if we have a pH at, of 1. So we said pH equals minus log of the proton concentration. Okay? Now, what we want to do is now we want to find out what is the proton concentration if our pH, for example, is 1. So we have pH equals 1. And in this case, we have 1 equals minus log proton concentration. Let me just remove this part here so that it doesn't get confusing. 1 equals minus log of the proton concentration. How can we actually find out what this H plus concentration is? You are absolutely right. What we can do is we can, first of all, let's get rid of the negative sign. Yeah? We bring this negative sign to that side. So we have minus 1 equals log of protons. Yeah? And now, what we do now is a simple inverted operation. In mathematical terms, it's an inversion. Remember? When we said x plus 5 equals 16, in order to separate the x and everything else, what we did was we subtracted 5 from each side. x plus 5 minus 5 equals 16 minus 5. So this 5 was subtracted from this one and from this side here. So plus 5 minus 5, that's 0. So we have x equals 16 minus 5 equals 11. Yeah? What we used here with this minus 5 was exactly the inverted operation of this plus here. Remember, when we had 3x equals 15. What we did was we used the inverted operation. We have 3 times x. So the inverted operation of multiplication is division. So we use this one here. And we have 3x over 3 equals 15 over 3. Here the 3 cancel out, we have x on its own, which is, of course, 5. Now, what we can do here is the inverted operation to log. And as Seamus pointed out, the operation, the inverted operation to log is 10 to the power of. So what we do is, we take both sides 10 to the power of. 10 to the power of 
minus 1 equals 10 to the power of log proton. And as before, with the plus 5 and minus 5, or times 3 divided by 3, 10 and log cancels out. So what we have is 10 to the minus 1 equals the proton concentration, because that is what's on the right-hand side left. That is what remains on the right-hand side. Sense doesn't make sense. It's left on the right-hand side. <coughs> Never mind. Now, obviously, we need to find a unit for that. So our proton concentration at pH 1 would be 10 to the minus 1. What? Moles per liter. You are right, although you looked a little bit sort of questioning. Molar. Molar, mole per liter, absolutely fine. Yeah, it's the same thing. Tomatoes, tomatoes. I told you we can only use this here when we have this as molar or mole per liter. Yeah? We can't do a logarithm of a unit. That's not possible. We can only do logarithms of numbers. So that's why it is implicit that it is molar, mole per liter. So we now know that at pH 1, at pH 1, the proton concentration is actually 10 to the minus 1 mole per liter, or 0 0.1 mole per liter. That's the same. Does that make sense? And we can do that for any kind of pH. We can, for example, say, What's the pH? P, we have a pH is 8. What's the proton concentration? We do exactly the same. 8 equals minus log proton concentration in molar. Bring the minus to that side. We have minus 8 equals log proton concentration, still in molar. We do the inverse operation, 10 to the power of. We get 10 to the power of minus 8 equals 10 to the power of log protons. 10 and log cancels out, and we have... H plus equals 10 to the minus 8 mole per liter. Does that make sense? Yeah? Question for your homework. I know you have a physiology on Wednesday, is that right? Sorry? Wednesday. Thursday. Okay. Whenever, whenever. Question for you guys. Can we have a pH? I told you we have a pH on our pH scale. It usually starts with 1. Can the pH be smaller than 1? Yes? Can the pH be higher than 14? Can a pH be higher than 14? Sorry? I haven't, seen it. I haven't ever seen it smaller than 1 or higher than 14. Can it be smaller than 1? Okay, you figure it out. I shall see you on Thursday.